Good morning. Join with me as we center ourselves with the prescription for spiritual alignment. We are aligned with the presence of God within. We are protected by God's love, wisdom, knowledge, and grace. The God consciousness within helps us discover more about who we are. Thank you, God, for the gift of spiritual intuition. Thank you, God, for aligning our conscious, subconscious, and superconscious minds. And as we become aware of the energy that is streaming in to support our souls, we make the conscious decision to use this life, this energy to support our souls, to move forward in the evolution of our soul consciousness and fulfill the destiny of our souls. Thank you. Amen. The destiny of your soul. The destiny of your soul is full conscious awareness. And there's an energy right now that's streaming in to support that full conscious awareness of your soul. Sometimes when we get quiet, when we're open, we can feel that energy streaming in supporting us. And the question is, what are we going to do with it? This energy has always been here. In all of your lifetimes, going back millennia, you've been supported by the energy, that soul energy that moves you forward. But this is the first time that you've been conscious of it. Up until now, you haven't been conscious. You've unconsciously been supported by that soul energy and and you've used it to do your karma to accumulate experiences and to grow and evolve in many ways but now you're at that point where you are becoming a consciously soul infused person and that conscious awareness makes all the difference because now you can take responsibility for the evolution of your soul no longer are you living your life unconsciously just lurching from circumstance to circumstance like a, a cork on a wave bobbing around in the water. You are now, you now have a direction because you are consciously moving in support of your soul. And you're joining other people in doing this as well because although it's a quiet, change in consciousness, a revolution in consciousness of humanity, we are all evolving together. And there are people in every country at every level, every walk of life, especially people who are doing it anonymously, who are awakening in their conscious awareness of the who that they are. And so you're in good company. The change in the world, and we are changing the world, by doing this work. The change in the world is occurring quietly, surreptitiously, under the surface. There's so much going on. We think that the world evolution is determined by political determinations or uh, big events on the world stage or things that are dramatic. But the truth is, that the evolution of humanity is the collective evolution that is pushed forward by those who become consciously aware of their soul's evolution. And each person, one person, who wakes up in consciousness to their soul awareness, who opens their heart in their soul awareness, is far more powerful than any world leader who seeks to dominate or control or do anything in an outer and manipulative way. And I know it's a challenge to think that because in this third dimensional realm, it looks like 
the physical power has all the power. It looks like the material stuff is what's really going on. But there's something going on under the surface that is far more powerful, and you are at the forefront of it. So the question that I had to ask myself when I began to study with Jane Hart 30 years ago was, how can I operate in the best interest of my life plan, of my soul? Now, next week, Lynn's going to start a lesson series on the life plan, but we're going to get a little foreshadowing of it because the soul can't exist without its life plan. Your soul chose a life plan to come into incarnation on the earth this time around, and you can work in conscious cooperation with that life plan, and so take responsibility for the evolution of your soul. How can you work in the best interest of the life plan that you created in this lifetime? Well, first of all, you have every day, take a moment in meditation, in prayer, or just simple awareness when you wake up in the morning that you are a soul in evolution and that you are consciously aware that there's more to you than just what meets the eye. There's more to you than your personality self, that limited part of yourself that has been leading the way that's been your uh your focus of your conscious awareness in so many lifetimes embrace the destiny of yourself as a soul in evolution now your soul in its evolving state started out in the most primitive level it started out in the level of the the mineral and moved into the, uh, the plant and then the animal and finally into human consciousness. And along the way, you gathered a lot of baggage that needs to be discarded. Now, as you uncover your soul, you become aware that your soul is your true identity. You might have thought up till now that your ego, your personality self was your true identity. But the truth is, that you are an evolving soul. And you might have been drawn to this awareness through a deep sense of dissatisfaction. The very things that you tried to avoid in your life, that you said to yourself, this is no fun. I don't like this. This just doesn't fulfill my ego's desires. Those things themselves are actually waking you up. And that feeling, whether it's because of a circumstance in your life or whether it's simply because you're not being satisfied by this material life, that dissatisfaction is what is nudging you forward and, and helping you to become aware. You may have thought that you would fulfill that part of yourself that you're yearning to experience through religion, the practice of certain rituals or adhering to a certain dogma or, or joining a certain uh, group or something. And although religion has its place in the soul's evolution, you've grown beyond that. You're moving into the spirituality that does not need to read many books in order to fulfill itself. And just think about all the spiritual books you've read in your lifetime. They've been signposts on your journey. They've helped you. But what you're looking for right now can't be fulfilled in the pages of a book. The only book you need to read right now is the book of your own soul. Oh, you might pick something up and you might be guided to read something, but it's not in order to get something and put it into yourself to fill your head, your, your brain, your intellect with lots of concepts. In fact, what you're letting go of now are the concepts that have been holding you in a stuck place. I'm going to share with you this, this uh, spiritual ball, this karmic ball. And this, these different uh, uh, rubber bands represent not just beliefs, false beliefs that we've held or experiences, karma that we hold, but also the religious beliefs, the, the, the teachings that no longer support our soul. And your job is to divest yourself one by one of these limiting ideas that you've held 
about your spirituality. You realize right now that there's something in you that's intangible that you might sense energetically, or you just might be aware of it. You don't know why you know it. And you might be saying to yourself, you might have said to yourself for years, I, I'm waiting to discover something. I know there's something in me that I want to find out. That is your soul calling you to come into the conscious awareness of your evolution, telling you that it's time to look at your life in a different way, to see your life as an adventure and to turn everything on its head, to reverse the polaris polarities of your life so that it's no longer about getting the experiences that you want, but rather using the experiences, even the ones you don't want, in order to wake yourself up. You are a soul evolutionist, which is a person who knows that you have evolved and that there's a next step in your evolution that is very different than those evolutionary steps you've taken up till now. Now, instead of wanting to accumulate experiences or have outer success or whatever, any material things in the outer world, they just don't satisfy you anymore. And you want to look at yourself in a conscious way. You want to awaken and find something new within your beingness. There comes a time within yourself that you say to yourself, there has to be more. I'm happy one day. I'm unhappy the next day. Uh, I'm satisfied. Then I'm dissatisfied. And, and, and you've asked yourself, and that's what drew you into this class. You ask yourself the question, how am I going to find this out? How am I going to find out how to open the inner door to my higher consciousness? Because that door is there within you. And you no longer are living your life unconsciously. You've always had the DNA of God that was placed in you at the beginning of time. That's been with you through all of your evolutions, through the simplest stages of being, the mineral, the plant, the animal, then the human. But now that DNA of God, just like the seed that becomes a tree, is growing into its full fruition and you are awakening. You are becoming fully aware in your God consciousness. Your soul is waking you up. Now, we can see that that DNA of God is in every level. Those of us who've experienced communication with plants, maybe, maybe you had an experience once when you were uh, a gardener and you felt the plants were talking to you. Uh, I remember um, Prince Charles of England, who's very much into agriculture, wrote an entire book about how uh, plants communicate. With, with the human being. And of course, he was ridiculed for it. But if you've tended flowers or, or, or grown vegetables and you're a sensitive soul, which you are, you've been aware that that DNA of God, that God awareness was there and is there at every level. And those of us who've had pets, we've communicated on an intuitive level. There's a wisdom, a knowledge, an understanding that is truly spiritual in our, our sweet animals that, that we nurture, our cats, our dogs, or whatever kind of pets that you've had. So you've been aware as time has gone on that the evolution of the soul, that DNA that was placed there at the beginning continues to evolve and is there in an unconscious form at every level. But now you are a part of this. You as an expression of God are a part of that unfoldment and you are waking up to that DNA, that God awareness that's been latent within your being, almost like it's been there asleep, although it's expressed. But now you're ready to take your next conscious step. And the question to ask yourself is, what am I all about? What is my life in this lifetime about? Am I satisfied with watching the news and seeing what's on Netflix and hanging out with people? 
these are all parts of life and they should be honored. But catch the energy that says, I am more than this body. Catch the energy that says, I'm more than that which is sitting here. I'm awakening in my soul. And that's the most important thing I can do. It's the greatest desire of my heart because your desire is that which activates the awakening and the quickening of that DNA within your being. You are walking out of the third dimensional experience into the fourth dimensional reality of your soul. This is the destiny of your soul to move from the third to the fourth dimension. And you are consciously walking out by choosing to walk out of the third dimensional level into that fourth dimensional awareness. It's a journey of gradual unfoldment of conscious awareness. And as Jane has said many times, it's a slow by sure process. Although we should be diligent, we should be engaged and have a, a strong desire. We don't push it. We allow the unfoldment of it. So as you engage in your conscious evolution, know that it's not trying to force it through human effort, through intellectual effort, but also that you uh, don't uh, uh, hold back out of complacency or uh, a sense of, of satisfaction with being stuck in the material realm. As I look back over my years of studying with Jane, I can see where she challenged me again and again to let go of a limited expression of my soul, a limited expression of my understanding. And how I looked at things in the past bears little resemblance to how I look at things now. And although I spent 40 years as in the clergy, supposedly talking to people about the religious and spiritual teachings, I think back on where I was at, how I looked at things, and it bears little resemblance to the way I see things now. I really saw my spirituality as a means to the end of creating greater success for my personality self. And in so doing, I thought I was growing spiritually. And that's where I was at because I was more in my third dimensional reality than into the fourth dimensional reality that I'm walking into. But then the day came when I was called to consciously move into soul evolution. And this is the destiny of your soul as well. You've been very busy, as we all have, trying to improve your personality. We've had gym memberships and we've had diets we've been on and, and we've tried to forward our careers and have relationships, get a better job, have material things. But there's a point at which that is not satisfying us because all of those things, every one of them will leave you. You can't hold on to any of those things. They don't accumulate in your soul. They are simply personality things. But what will never leave you? If those things are all going to leave you, there's one thing that will never leave you. And that one thing is here in your heart. And I want you to become aware for just a moment what your heart is telling you. Ask your heart, what is the one thing? What is really here? What do I want to experience more than anything else? And let that desire move you forward. This is a commitment that you're making. And ask yourself, what is my commitment? Because first there's desire. And then there's a commitment that you make based on that desire. There's more to you than meets the eye. And perhaps you might want to put that commitment into words so that you can have a strong nucleus around which your soul evolution can gather. Jane shared that at one point, her commitment was, I will to will the will of God. Her mother had given her a book, and that was the suggestion that she write that 
desire. I will to will the will of God. And she wrote it out a thousand times. And she said her life never changed back. And so ask yourself, what's the commitment that I can use to back up my desire right now? You are on a spiritual journey as a soul in evolution. And your commitment is that which gathers the energy around itself in order to move your soul forward. And this means not playing it small. And I have, I remember many times in the last few decades talking to people about not playing it small. And I was really talking about more material things, more psychological things. But now I realize that when I say to myself, I don't want to play it small, I'm really saying, I don't want to live from the material level anymore because that's where it's small. I don't want to be in the third dimension anymore, that material realm where everything can be taken from me. I want to be in the greater awareness, the realm of the fourth dimension, which is the realm of the soul that stays with me through every experience in life and beyond. When I was a child, I remember seeing the trains that would go by. Uh, and, and in those days, they had a caboose and they had an engine. And the engine was the power. But the ego in our lives is like the caboose. And it thinks it's pushing the engine. It has no power. The engine, that first experience that comes first, is your soul. And it's drawing you forward. No longer are you willing to see that you're some kind of an ego that's pushing the train of your life forward. You are a soul evolving and you're being drawn forward and you're not an ego pushing the train, which it never did anyway. That was an illusion. The ego will do anything it can to get you to think that it's driving you forward. The ego will pull at you, will try to convince you that it is all powerful. And as I'm in this spiritual process, I'm noticing every day, my ego is telling me things and I get a choice to say, no, you're a liar. You're stupid. This is not who I am. And I also notice how sneaky it is because as we grow spiritually, the ego's strategies become more and more subtle. And so, Often the ego will jump into our so-called spiritual development and uh, try to take that over as well. Look at me. I'm great. I'm wonderful. Or in terms of our cleansing work and our healing work, oh, I'm so terrible. I'm so awful. Both of which are simply the ego's attempts to derail the process of the soul development. Don't let your ego run your life. The question to ask is, who is driving the train? Who's the boss here? The soul or the ego? And who's in charge? That decision, that answer to that question happens every day because every day there's energy coming in. Every day there's energy that's coming in to support your soul. And the question is, what are you doing with that energy? You came into this lifetime with a life plan, as I said. And we're going to spend the next several weeks working on that concept. But you chose what your soul would do and experience in a general sense in this lifetime. What you didn't choose is how you would respond or react to it. And that is where free will comes in. Yes, it was your free will to create the life plan so that when you look at your life, you're no longer able to convince yourself that you're trapped in a life that you didn't choose. You did choose this life, but where you have choice right now, where you have free will right now, is how am I going to respond to these situations in my life? And where am I going to live my life from? You know, we, we play it small. We think that we're uh, all of these material things that go on and we think they're so important. Somebody in our group was sharing that he heard Jane say uh, a while ago that it's like 
we're all uh, airplanes on the tarmac of an airport uh, driving around on the ground in our airplanes, not realizing we have wings because we have wheels. And so we think we're cars. We've hypnotized ourselves into forgetting or not knowing that there is another aspect of our beingness, that there's something more to us. And we can reach for that something more and express that something more. And once we reach a certain trajectory, a certain uh, a certain uh, speed, we can lift off and our soul can lift into a new awareness. Now, what's going on in the world today is always a challenge to us. And many of our loved ones may be expressing um, opinions and limited feelings. And I know in our Thursday support group or question and answer group, which you're all welcome to be a part of, people are talking about that. We all have had that experience of being exposed to people who want to draw us into their sense of unreality. Or we look at the world around us, we look at the world affairs, and sometimes they're troubling to us. But the truth is, is that we cannot control what anyone else thinks. We are only responsible for ourselves. It's like what they say in uh, relationships with addicts. Don't try to uh, argue with a person in a situation like that. Instead, work on your own health. health. God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And once we realize that we can't change anyone out here, and that the situations in the world are what they are, and that the strongest thing we can do for the people around us is to gather and express and shine enough light so that if they so choose, they might benefit from it without our forcing it on them. Then we free them and we free ourselves. You know, I grew up with parents who had, they were very, um, they were survivalists, they were conspiracy theorists, they had gas masks in the basement and, uh, and food stores. They believed things that never came true that never happened. And this was back in the 1960s. But through that, as hard as it was for me, I realized my job was not to try to get them to behave the way I wanted them to behave. And so as you re recognize that you're a soul in evolution, you free the other souls around you to be right where they choose to be without letting it uh, impinge on your soul freedom or your soul awareness. And so I, I had to realize that I had to let them off the hook and I had to find an intentional family. And I found that intentional family in my spiritual pursuits so that I could let them off the hook and let them be where they were at so that I could have enough distance, enough of a detachment so that I could truly love them and truly love them, which includes acceptance that that's where they're at. That doesn't mean you validate or you agree with or you enable anybody's way of thinking. It just means that you don't try to control them and get upset and create a bigger problem because you're trying to get them to see things or do things differently than they are. And then you're free to have the relationship that you can have with them because you're not trying to make them into the kind of people that you want them to be. And this is true in terms of our world situation as well. What we're developing here in grappling with these circumstances in world affairs and our families and our lives is that we're developing intuition, the intuitive sense of knowing when to hold them, when to fold them, and exercising our soul awareness. And that's why it's so important to meditate each day so that your channel is open and receptive and flowing and you know when to step back when to um, release something, when to speak up when it's appropriate, which is a lot less often than I used to think was appropriate. And create your intentional family. Let our Thursday night group be your intentional family. Let the people that you can share your spiritual things 
with be your soul family or you can let your soul express and then you can let your physical family and the other people in your life off the hook your life is moving now from just trying to solve the problems in your life and being a problem solver to being a soul in evolution and in that soul awareness expanding your problems get solved your soul takes care of you you find that your spirituality is not primarily a means of getting your human problems solved. And it's interesting, you will find that your human problems are solved through spiritual means, but not by putting your problems first, but instead putting your soul growth first. It's far more important where you're making your decisions from than what your decisions are. And that's where the spiritual thermometer comes in. This is found in the book Spiritual Power Tools. And it's far more important that you keep yourself above a five than you try to solve your problems all the time and focus on the problems. Focus instead on the consciousness from which you are addressing everything in your life. So use your meditation to raise your rate of vibration. Use your journaling to release those lower thought forms that have been held, holding you back. Use your observer self to be aware in every now moment, where am I on this spiritual thermometer and where would I like to be? And what you'll find is that 90% of your problems will simply solve themselves. And the other 10%, you will be given exactly what you need in order to get the answers that you're supposed to have. And James has put in the um, chat room a link to that spiritual thermometer, but you'll find it also in your Spiritual Power Tools book. You can use these circumstances, political or personal or otherwise, to forward your soul evolution and to move you forward in your awareness and not being self-righteous about these things is such a key because if you're below, if you, or if you're self-righteous, you're below a five. When you're saying they need to understand this and I'll be darned, I'm not going to let them get away with whatever. That's being self-righteous and that's below a five. And that's where I found myself trapped for many, many years and still have a tendency. But then I have to wake up and realize no, I'm a soul in evolution, and I'm not limited by these things. So how can your soul help you to navigate these diff difficult situations in your life? Well, the first thing is that you're never put into situations that are insurmountable. Every problem that you have in your life is something that your soul is more than capable of dealing with if you'll let your soul do it and not try to use your intellect or your personal self in order to get yourself through these problems. Your soul is completely attuned to the solution and is capable of handling the challenges that you have. These situations in life have one purpose and one purpose only, to give you the opportunity to awaken and develop a greater and greater awareness. Every situation in your life has only that one purpose, to give you a chance to wake up. And you say to yourself in the middle of the situation, and you feel so upset, your emotions are charged, your thinking is negative, and suddenly you wake up. You say to yourself, I know there's something more here. Help me. And call forth that soul awareness. Call forth your infinite beingness. Call forth the power that can come in and open the door so that you can see what the real purpose is. Because that situation is there to help you to let go of a limitation. Jane has said that this statement is a powerful one that you can use to welcome every opportunity for spiritual growth. Thank you for this opportunity to learn and grow into God consciousness. And so I'm just going to say that again. Thank you for this opportunity to learn and to grow into God consciousness. 
And you can take that, she said, and use that when you're in the middle of a situation, no longer seeing yourself as a victim of these things, but instead seeing yourself as having an opportunity to grow. Connecting with your soul expands your consciousness because your soul is your connection with the infinite self, the infinite mind of God. And so your soul is a fragment of God is one way of looking at it, or an individual portion of the mind of God. And as you connect with your soul, your ideas expand and your awareness of all things increase. You grow bigger than your problems. And so it's not, if you try to solve the problem on the level of the problem, you're going to be drilling down into it, getting stuck into it more and more. But as you expand your soul awareness through your meditation and your journaling, your observer self and your forgiveness, you grow bigger and bigger. And the problems, often you find out weren't problems at all. If they were, they seem to work themselves out because of the light and the energy that you're bringing to bear upon them. And if there is some information, some intuitive awareness that you need, you're in a place where you can receive it. All solutions to every problem in your life become available to you. Your soul is in alignment with your life plan. And these situations in your life are a part of your life plan. So your ultimate happiness is really the first priority of your soul. Ultimate happiness. That means the fulfillment of your life plan. That means the expansion of your soul awareness. Not getting what you want in this circumstance. And that's a challenge to surrender what you thought you wanted. To be willing to surrender is it takes courage. It takes heart. And it's probably the hardest thing to do because I know I want what I want. And I think I know what I need. And sometimes I do. But often I found I have to let go of my limited view of what's going to make me happy in order to embrace and experience what will truly make me happy in alignment with my life plan in alignment with my soul. What, what you find out is when you take these steps to surrender and to open up to a greater happiness, that you are letting go of limitations that have been holding you back all your life. And some of my most cherished limitations, things that I thought were so right or so good, were the things that were holding me back the most. And your soul knows what they are. And what happens is that as soon as you get comfortable with a certain level of your awareness, you're challenged to drop the limitations and expand. And then as soon as you get comfortable at that level of expression, you are urged to move forward again. Life is a constant expansion. This is why you've got to let go of your fears, because these limitations most often show up as fears. Your soul knows what pushes your buttons and sometimes will push your buttons so that you'll let go of these cherished fears so that you can expand into what you need to expand into in order to be free. Your soul is your great support system. But it takes desire and it takes commitment. How do you make a commitment to your soul? Maybe this week. Take a little time and do a little journaling and ask yourself, what is my commitment to my soul? Jane has said that at times in her development, in her evolution, her commitments were ones like, I want to open the door to higher consciousness. Or I shared before, I will to will the will of God, which is something was probably her first commitment that she made spiritually. And when you get to that point in your development, that you're ready to move into soul involution, what you really are experiencing is that you've evolved and moved forward and expanded and expanded. And now you're ready to move inward. 
and this is also a part of your life plan, you set it up so that you would have a lifetime of soul evolution until you reach a certain point. And then instead of moving outward, you move inward. Instead of evolving, you become a soul involutionist, which is a challenging concept that Jane shares in that last video in our lesson on the soul in the self-study lessons on the website. Your soul, after it's evolved to a certain point, is most interested in going within. Your soul has a destiny, and that destiny is only found by turning within. You are ready to find out who you really are, but that inward journey is really a matter of divesting yourself of everything unlike that inner light. This world of evolution is not satisfied. You're yearning, you're longing for that something that is already there within you. That which you're looking for is what's doing the looking in you right now. And you know that you have to go within to find it. You were prepared for this before this lifetime. You know, there are classes that happen spiritually between lifetimes. There are also classes that happen at night while you're asleep. And you have already been prepared as part of your life plan and as part is take, of taking part in these different classes that happen in the inner, in the inner realm of your beingness. And maybe you heard the term center for enlightenment or soul evolution or and then you resonated with it and then you showed up here and you went sounds familiar this feels somehow i mean this isn't like the first time i've been in this classroom it may be the first time i've been in a third dimensional classroom that's saying these things but there's something more i remember when i was a little kid and i had a dream maybe when i was eight years old and it stuck with me and in that dream I was in a classroom and my dad was a Freemason. And so this classroom was a Freemason, a Masonic classroom. And some of the symbols of his Mason ring and some of the things that I could see were there. It was all symbolic so that I could see. It wasn't literal, I'm sure. But I literally was in a classroom, I know, even at the age of eight. And you have been too. You've been taught on the inner planes in such a way that your soul evolution has brought you to the point where you can, as a soul involutionist, access that deeper teaching that goes beyond religion, that goes beyond even the spirituality of books, something that is really a part of your being. So that's why all of this may seem familiar to you. And you've made your current decisions in your life based upon a lot of the information that perhaps you received in an inner awareness, in an out-of-body experience. The more you go within, the more you access this inner knowledge, this inner awareness, the more your limitations get erased one by one. And what you find is that you don't have to do it all by yourself. Jane has said many times that you don't have to release every single rubber band on the karmic ball. You have to work with a certain proportion of them, but the rest is done with you and for you and you were supported in doing so. So your every effort is multiplied and supported by the inner resource of your out-of-body teachers, your spiritual support, that awareness which is spiritual and which is lifting you up right now. Your destiny is to become conscious, consciously aware as an individual in the light of being, individually conscious of the infinite. I remember hearing Jane's spiritual partner, Shireen, talk about an experience she had where she had grown to a certain point in her consciousness of awareness. And she realized to her surprise that she wasn't becoming less individually conscious. She was becoming more of who she was 
not separate anymore, though. It's kind of a, a paradox. So you can't think about it intellectually too much. But she was at one with everything and yet more individually herself, not personally, not on an ego level, but an individual expression of that which is infinite. And this is all a process. It takes courage. It takes responsibility. It takes diligence. And it takes that desire in your heart that you back up with your commitment to know the truth of your being. As you let go of your limited desires, you remove forward into the one desire. And that one desire, that desire of your heart, is the pearl of great price, is that treasure that will never be taken away from you. And everything else is going to be taken away from you. You're going to lose everything except for the one thing, which is that awareness of your soul essence. The light of your being is going to help you. It's going to bring into your awareness those patterns in your subconscious, those chunks of ice in the iceberg of your subconscious that need to come to the surface so that you can release them. And this process is called spiritual involution. Spiritual involution is the process of divesting yourself of all the things that you used to think were so important. All the things that I thought were so important, I've had to wake up and realize I don't want them anymore. In fact, I can't keep them. So I might as well let them go now consciously. And there's a new commitment that you make every step of this journey. And you're tested as you move forward. You have an awareness and you get to see whether you've really integrated that into your being, whether it's just floating on the surface of your consciousness or whether you've really taken it into your heart. And as you do this, you overcome your ego and you free yourself from the third dimension and move into the fourth dimension, which is your destiny as a soul. And it means you've got to be courageous. So what kind of a difference are you going to make in the world? This will be determined by the steps that you are taking. What kind of a dis difference can you make to lift up the consciousness of humanity? Your soul's evolution is crucial to the evolution of this planet. This planet and humanity would not be what they are without you. And if we all take responsibility for our soul's evolution, what we'll find is that our steps will help to change the world. With that in mind, we have to work in the best interests of our souls and the life plan that we've created in this lifetime in order to play our part in the awareness and the evolution of all of humankind. So what is the destiny of your soul? You are going to, and you are now, walking out of the third dimensional world into the fourth dimensional world of conscious awareness. It is a journey of conscious awareness. And I want to share as we move into our meditation time a quote that Jane gave about the true desire of our heart to know ourselves as infinite beings that keeps working to awaken us and move us out of our limited beliefs and open us into those expanding possibilities that we have latent within our souls, but now are coming to awareness. And she's, she wrote this, and I just want to read this quote to you. I just want you to be aware that where you are right now and what you are doing right now is of the utmost importance to your soul because you are never going to have to deal with the things that you're having to deal with now. You are going to get free of all of it. And I will tell you that when I was working through that stuff, she says, I thought that I was never, ever, ever, ever going to have another clean breath in my life. But things changed and revelations happened. New understandings happened. I became a new person, a new consciousness, if you will. And what you're doing 
is creating a new consciousness for yourself. That's your destiny. A new consciousness for yourself. An individual expression of the infinite, still individual, but one with all. And so let's have a, a meditation, a brief meditation in which we tap into that infinite awareness of our being, in which we become aware. I have been an evolving soul on a journey, and now I am turning inward. I'm cooperating with my life plan. I will to will the will of God by engaging with the expansion of the conscious awareness, my conscious awareness of the truth of my being. I am a consciously evolving soul turning within. And touching into the energy and vibration, the light and the life of who I am. I am a soul in evolution, expanding in my conscious awareness of the truth of my being. I free everyone to be on their own evolutionary journey. As I focus on opening my heart and establishing myself, my soul awareness. Thank you. Thank you for this truth. Amen. As we come back to the presence of this room that we're in right now, we just Become aware that we're supported by the other people in this circle, the other souls on their journeys, many of whom come on Thursday nights at 7 Eastern time, and we support each other. And there's the link in the chat room. You can really get some support for your soul in taking what we've been exploring on Sunday and really putting it to work. And uh, you don't have to say a word, but if you want to, you can get uh, a lot of help uh, and a lot of support on your journey Thursdays at 7 Eastern. And also, if you wish to support the Center for Enlightenment, there's a link in your chat room, and it's also on the website where you can donate to the center. Well, I've enjoyed these past few weeks of exploring the soul with you. And I know that we're all going to have a wonderful adventure together on the Sundays that are coming, in which we're going to explore how the soul engages with its life plan, and how a life plan was created by us with spiritual support. And we're living that life plan now. And that's going to be next Sunday. And until Thursday or next Sunday, thanks for being here. Bye for now.